Thank you so much. In the presence of royalty. Oh, please. Gospel royalty. God bless you. It's good to be here. How long? Uh, about 27, 28 years. And you've kept yourself well. Richard Smallwood, yeah. where did it all begin? Playing the piano? Yeah, it, it began uh, when I was, my mother says that I was uh, walk, I wasn't walking yet, uh, wasn't talking yet. And they would take me to church on uh, Sunday mornings and I would come home and hum whatever melodies that uh, I heard at church. So uh, they got me a little toy piano and I began to bang out the rhythms until I was old enough to climb up on my father's real piano and pick out melodies and harmonies. And that's by the time I was seven. He was a pastor. So by the time I was seven, I was playing for his church. So, so it's in the genes. Yeah. yeah. Your dad played and, and yeah, he did. Sang. Mm -hmm. And you grew up in church in the church grew up environment. In church. Right. right. So, but you couldn't read music or anything. You you just Not heard the, something and yeah, you produced it. Yeah, I was it. here by ear, and and uh, I would I would have it, and I could play it just the way that I heard it. Uh, of course, that created a problem when I began to take piano lessons, which I didn't start till I was about eight, which means I had been playing for about four years. Um, so my teachers had the hardest time trying to make me uh, learn how to read because I would say if I had a piece to do the next, for the next uh, lesson, and she said, Richard, I need you to do page 33 next next week and I said play it for me and so she play it and while she was playing it it'd just be recorded in my ear. <laughs> I wish I could have done that in mathematics yeah but. <laughs> yeah yeah then he catch me until I was in uh high school really and one teacher finally figured out what was going on and she was the one who taught me how to read by that time I was like 15. But you learned. So I learned. You learned how to read And music. learned. I went on to Howard uh, University and was a piano, classical piano major. So I, I, I learned. I definitely so learned. I, after learning how to read music, mm -hmm. what did that do for you personally? I mean, it was easier for you to just listen. You had this gift. And, you know, people will ride on a gift for a long time, as long as they can. Right, right. But then now you become technical. Yeah. And developing your skill in a very technical way. Right. How did that right. impact your right. music? I, I think it just uh, uh, it encouraged me to be a better musician. It made me really proud of myself because I thought it was something that I never uh, would learn how to do because it just seemed so hard and it seemed so unnecessary when I could depend on my ear. Mm -hmm. But uh, it opened up so many avenues for me as a musician. Mm. Uh, and of course, I could not become a piano major unless I could read, you know, music. So. Uh, uh, it, it, it made me feel good about myself. It sort of made me more diverse in what I could do. Um, I just was not confined to the ear. But if someone, you know, I'm in church and somebody puts a hymn or whatever up in front of my eyes, I could play it as well. So, Was it common that there were individuals around you growing up who, like you, could listen to something and then reproduce it because you hear stories like that that come from the church world right you know also in the secular world also but you know in the church world you you hear stories like that it wasn't for me I was always the um, the oddball <laughs> the kid who played the piano and those who you know who were around me that did play they couldn't hear you know pick it up by ear like I could you know so they, they sort of looked at me as an oddity my entire childhood was like that but not uh, only did you play, you started singing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Was, well, I that, was it always like that? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my father, um, I must have been around four, uh, and when he would go out to preach, he'd take me with him and set me up in a chair, and he'd play and I'd sing. At what age were you? I was about four. Really? About four or five. Mm -hmm. So you sang, you played a piano, you mm -hmm. sang, and then you discovered some writing ability along the way? I did. Actually, I sort of knew it when I was small. I wrote my first song when I was about um, seven. It was a lullaby called Richard's Lullaby. That's what I, that's what I called it. <laughs> uh, and I, 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 I played around with some writing in high school, junior high, 
but never really felt secure in, in doing that. It wasn't until I got to college hmm. that I really began to write. I was very, very uh, inspired by my good, good friend, Edwin Hawkins. Uh, yeah. And the first time I heard, uh, you have to understand that before uh, Edwin came out with his style of playing, his style of writing, uh, gospel music harmonically was very simple. You, know, you didn't use anything that would be deemed a jazz chord or mm -hmm. anything like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so when he came out, and was so bold enough to uh, use these harmonies that I'd never heard in church before. I went like ballistic. I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. And I just began to write and write and write and write. And um, that's how it really, really started for me. R&B flavor came in, I remember, because, you know, growing up in the sure. 60s and Motown. In the 70s yeah, and that, yeah. that whole thing. And then, you know, hearing Edwin Hawkins singers come out with some of these songs that were also socially conscious. Very much so. You know, so. Uh, I'll Take You There. Right. And, and uh, even uh, Oh Happy Day was more than just a church oh, song. Certainly, it certainly. was part of the social movement that was certainly, taking place. Certainly. Did you find yourself socially aware and how did that relate to your music? Almost definitely, because I was, I was a student at Howard and I was there during um, the takeovers and the sit-ins. At Howard, uh, in the music department, you weren't allowed to play gospel music. Really? Uh, yeah. But, but wait, wait, wait. Historically black. Howard is a historically black college and it didn't allow gospel music. Didn't allow gospel music. There was no jazz department, nothing. Why, there. why, why? Because it seemed that their, their view of music was that in order for it to be authentic and an accepted art form, it had to be classical. Really? Anything else was not. So, you know, that's what, that was the challenge I faced at Howard. Here's somebody who's been in gospel music all their life mm -hmm. and listened to all kinds of music all their life. And I'm put in a university where I'm not allowed to express that part of my musicianship. And so I was not alone in my frustration. Um, so we decided to take over the Fine Arts Building. Up next, there's more with A.R. Bernard after the break.